So I'm going to teach you a little bit about integer overflows. Um, in order to do that, I'm going to just give a quick introduction to binary for those who aren't familiar with it. So here I've got an 8-bit binary number. We have the bit 0 to 7, and each bit is a power of 2. So the first bit is 2 to the power of 0, which is 1. Second is 2 to the power of 1, which is 2. 2 to the power of 3, 2 to the power of 4, and so on. So if we set the bit which bit 4, which is 16 to 1, our answer is going to be decimal 16 or hex 0x10. Now because the bits can only be 0 or 1, when we add 1 to our number, if the 1 bit or the first bit is set to 0, then we're going to set it to 1. Now if that bit is already set to 1, we're going to set it to 0 and carry the 1 to the next column like so. And that just keeps going like that. So the problem occurs when all of the bits are set to 1. Now what's going to happen if we add 1 now is it's going to set the first bit to 0, carry the 1 to the next column, setting that to 0, and carrying it so on and so on and so on. And what would happen is the ninth bit, or bit 8, would be set to 1. But that doesn't exist. So what's actually going to happen is all of the bits are going to be set to 0, and the ninth bit isn't going to be set to 1 because it doesn't exist, so it's just going to ignore that, essentially looping the number from the highest possible integer to the lowest possible, which is 0. So that is how an integer overflow works. Essentially, when you try to add past the maximum possible integer, it loops around to 0 and starts again. And because the difference between the maximum possible and the minimum possible integer is 1, whatever we add to the maximum possible integer, the result will be the number we add minus 1. So if it was this and we added the number 4, then the answer would be 3. So the maximum possible value a binary integer can hold is 2 to the power of however many bits it has minus 1. So in our case, that would be 2 to the power of 8 minus 1. Now integer overflows occur all the time in the real world and they can cause anything from a display error to a software vulnerability. One very recent example of an integer overflow was with Warren Buffett's company Berkshire Hathaway. The Nasdaq were using 32-bit integers to store the stock price, the max value of a 32-bit integer being 2 to the power of 32 minus 1, which is this number here, a little over 4 billion. Now, because the stock prices were stored to four significant decimal places, the maximum possible number that could be stored was 429,496.7295. Now, Berkshire Hathaway being the most expensive stock in the world actually reached this price. And when it did, the number looped back around to zero, making it look as if the stock had dropped all the way from 400,000 per share down to zero, which I could imagine would be very scary if you're an investor, given that the smallest amount of shares you can buy, which is one, would cost you nearly half a million dollars. Now, integer overflows can cause software vulnerabilities, the most famous of which is a heap overflow. Now, let's take our example code for instance. The code allows the user to send a file and its file name to the application. Now, in order to know how much space is required, the application is going to ask that the user sends the size of the file and the length of the file name. And in order to calculate how much space it needs in memory to store those two things, it is going to add the file size to the length of the file name, like we're doing here. So for example, let's say the user sends the file size of 12 and the file name is 10 bytes long. Well, when we run this application, it's going to allocate 22 bytes of space. Now, if the user was to set one of those values to the maximum possible integer, when the application adds the two values together, the result is going to be the maximum possible integer plus 10, which causes the loop around, leading to the result being 9. So what's happened here is the application has allocated 9 bytes of space for a file that is over 4 billion bytes in size and a name which is 10 bytes in length. So that space that we've allocated is neither big enough for the file size or the file name, which now allows the user to overflow the buffer by more than 4 billion bytes, which is an absolutely massive heap overflow. 